What would you like to highlight as one of the policy levers that you are, uh, are working with the states to, to impact? Well, as I said, first we're, we're working, uh, actually we're working first with setting goals that uh, the president has a very aggressive um, goal in terms of being uh, first in the world again uh, by 2020. <clears throat> the Gates Foundation has a very uh, aggressive goal in, in respect to doubling the number of young people um, who have a, a certificate of degree or a credential of value. Uh, and so we're working with the states uh, first to set goals, um, the overarching goals that are stretch goals. Uh, that both uh, include having states produce more degrees, but also closing the, uh, the gap uh, for underrepresented students. And so that's first. Uh, and that together, that would be followed by some of the measurement systems that I mentioned earlier, uh, and then followed probably by performance funding um, after that. What have you seen uh, that the states can learn from each other when, when one state has uh, tried something uh, you know, just within their borders, and uh, another state might be able to leverage that. Well, I think actually that's a very important point. I think if you look both at higher education and at K-12, the states have always been kind of laboratories for change. Um, and so some things that start in some states get picked up and replicated in other states. And so that's part of what we want to do with the alliance with 22 states, um, to be able to share some of the best practices across states. And I would also say that college completion is kind of an emerging area. There are some things we do know. We actually know more about what's wrong. We know less about what's right. Um, so as we learn more, um, then st states um, can can share with, with each other. And so I think I think part of the reason we wanted to work with an alliance of states is to, is to have that learning go on together. Is there something that you could share around the either the success or challenges of running an alliance that could help some of the post-secondary grantees with Gates think about sharing? Well, I think there's probably a couple issues. One is with especially with 22 states, uh, communication is a major issue. Uh, we find the 22 states uh, everywhere on the spectrum. We find some that are very aggressive and working on college completion for several years and have a well thought out plan. We find others that are kind of just starting out and, and, and just starting to say, okay, we, we think this is important, what do we do next? Um, so the states are, are in different places. They're also in different places in terms of commitment. And we're really looking for states that uh, will provide leadership, uh, will be willing to do things uh, boldly at scale, um, and really have a commitment to follow through. And so, um, so we think that there'll be a smaller group of states that will really kind of lead the way um, for the other states. Well, I'm certainly, I would think the policy um, environment, the politics as, say, governors change or state legislatures change, that that, that has uh, an impact. Um, have you seen states that, that you could highlight it, that there's been either some movement or uh, they've taken an aggressive stand and there is some success? Well, I think, um, I think in terms of uh, performance funding, I think Indiana, Ohio, uh, the state of Washington uh, are ones that uh, have taken pretty aggressive strategies for performance funding. Uh, I think there's a whole other wave of states that are very interested um, and currently are developing strategies and formulas that they'll introduce in their next sessions of, of their legislators. Um, so I think that um, probably, however, the most important uh, recent in, uh, situation was Tennessee. I had a special session uh, on higher education and on uh, K-12 and passed some really major higher education legislation addressing a number of the issues that, that we've been talking about. So linking the, um, the K-12 um, arena and, and higher ed it is probably one of the, the biggest opportunities. Uh, can you speak anything um, to the, the idea of the data infrastructure and th the sharing across those two landscapes that have traditionally been siloed? Is, are there, uh, have you seen that there's uh, some uh, progress in linking those? Well, there's a lot more interest in those progress. <laughs> so I think everybody is talking about it, but I think there's only a couple states that have been able to do that successfully, 
and only a couple that have um, been doing it have any uh, results. And uh, recently, not only linking it, but if you've linked your data, you know, you're actually collecting and reporting this has been useful in any way. And so I think that that's starting, um, but I think that we're just the beginning stages. Many, like 45 states, uh, have higher education databases. Um, and most all states have K-12 databases, but the linkages uh, between the two is the very more recent um, activity. That's very important to hear. Um, just to maybe to uh, to wrap this uh, back to yourself, what what motivated you to work in the in the area of college completion, and what what dr keeps driving you every day to do this work? Well, I mean, I think I've worked in. Uh, in education and policy, and I've been in the legislature, and I've seen these issues develop over the years. And I think that uh, the college complete. We spend an awful lot of time uh, uh, as a country and in states working on access issues, providing people an opportunity to go to college. And largely, as a country, we've been successful. Um, but clearly, um, the more I worked on these issues, it was pretty clear that we were not being successful in having students realize that. You know their dreams and their promises, um, and so I think that this is really the emerging area uh, in higher education public policy, and it's certainly something I think you know hopefully all of us can make a difference in. Thank you.